Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be showing you uh, the first part of our procedural generation uh, Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. So, um, in this one, I'm just going to kind of show you the basics of kind of making a procedurally generated floor, right? So instead of this big piece, we're just going to have, um, well, we're going to make it procedurally generated, right? So, so that'll be kind of cool. Um, kind of the, the benefits of it are um, it's a lot more efficient to render in games, or at least it can be, uh, depending on how many, um, how many meshes you're procedurally generating. Um, but it's definitely a, a cool thing to check out, so um, I highly rec recommend looking into it. Um, but with that, let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do, um, well, I'm using the third-person template. You can follow along with any project you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is in the content browser, I'm going to right-click and add a new folder called Proc Gen, right? So this is going to be where we keep all of our procedurally generated, um, or all of our Proc Gen blueprints, basically. Um, and if you notice, I do have the starter content enabled because we are going to be using the um, the floor mesh that they they provide. All right. So in our Proc Gen folder, let's add a new blueprint. Type actor, and let's call this um, Proc Gen Floor BP. All right, so open that up. All right, so you'll notice we just have a default scene root. Um, you can get rid of that if you want by replacing the root with something else, or you can just leave it. Um, I'm gonna leave it. So first thing we wanna do, we wanna add a, a component. So we're gonna be using something called an instanced static mesh, right? Instant static mesh. Um, and this will be what we use for, um, well, basically it's, these are the static meshes that, um, render a lot more efficiently. Like what they do is they take a, a static mesh that you that you define, so you define it over here, and it just creates a bunch of kind of copies of it, right? So it doesn't really store it um, necessarily in the game's memory, um, so that's why it, I guess, renders more efficiently. So um, let's call this floor, and then right away we will set our static mesh to floor. All right, so compile and save, and you'll notice that there's nothing here yet, and that's because we don't have any instances. So um, we're gonna, you know, again, procedurally generate them, but just to show that it will show up, I'm gonna add an instance, and you can see there it is, right? So um, the material is just compiling, so. Um, but yeah, there it is, so um, so you can see it's gonna work. So let's delete that, though, because we don't want it. And where we're gonna be working, we're gonna be working in the construction script, right? Um, instead of the event graph, okay? So make sure you're in the construction script. Now. What we want to do next is we want to add a couple variables. So let's add a variable, and we'll call this um, number meshes um, x. Change that to an integer. Add another one called number meshes y. Add another one called um, mesh width. One more called mesh length. All right, and now these two need to be changed to floats. Right, so you should have your setup like this, right? Number meshes X, number meshes Y, mesh width, mesh length. And make sure also that they're all public so that you can edit them um, from inside, you know, from right here, from the editor. All right, so now basically what each of these are is, well, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the, this is gonna be the number of meshes in the um, X direction, right? So going off that way. Number of meshes Y is gonna be the number of meshes in the Y direction. The mesh width is going to be the, the width of our mesh, mesh, and the mesh length is going to be the length of our mesh. So uh, again, pretty self-explanatory, um, but it'll be extremely helpful to have. So, so how we're going to do this, we're going to use something called a for loop, right? And so what that says is, it basically says for, for each whatever, um, do something, right? So let's drag off of here, type in for loop. And you'll see it has a first index and last index, right? So this first index, it's always going to default to zero, and that's what we want. Um, but I'm just going to, you know, type it in just to make sure. Um, and then for this first one, we want to use it to generate our uh, meshes in the x direction. So we'll take number of meshes x, drag it in, get it. And now, because this is a um, zero-based number system, right? Like it starts from zero instead of one. Um, we're going to need to convert ours to a zero-based number scale as well. So to do that, just simply subtract one, right? And then there we go. 
All right. Now, so that's good for the number of meshes x. Now what we need to do is we need to do another loop for the number of meshes y using the same exact kind of setup. Now, this is what we call a nested for loop because there's a loop inside of a loop. So um, drag that out. Again, get the number of meshes y, subtract 1, plug it into last index. I'll just make some more space here. I make first index 0. All right, so we've got the basic setup, right? So we will be able to generate our meshes now. Um, next, what we need to do is we need to actually add the instances of the mesh. So to do this, we'll drag our floor into here. We'll say add instance, oops, add instance. And then we'll just hook up the loop body, just like that. Now, you see that it's giving us an instance transform, right? And the reason for that is we need to specify where we want each of our instances um, to be place, placed. So to do this, we're going to drag off of instance transform. I'm going to say make transform. Create some more space here for us to work. And then we are only concerned with the location right now. So I'm going to drag off of location and say make vector, just like that. And now you see it gives us each of the individual values. It gives us, it gives us the x, the y, and the z. Um, and so we'll be using this one, which is going to be you know our x. We'll be using the indexes from this to um, get our x position. And we'll be using the indexes from the y loop um, for our y direction. So how we're going to do this is we're going to drag off of index, right? And we're going to say times or int times float. Okay, and then we're going to do the same here, int times float. There we go. So we've got our x, we've got what will be our y, and then we're going to plug each of these in, just like that. All right, and so now um, we need a value, right, to plug into here to tell us where to place each of our indexes. So um, to do this, we're going to use the mesh width and mesh length variables that we created. Now, um, if you don't know which belongs where, right? So right now I'm just I'm getting them, all right? So if you don't know which one belongs where, um, this is where we go. We uh, go and find our mesh, right? So this one. If you open it up, you'll see here's our length by width by height, right? So it's going to be 400 times or by 400 by 20. So um, for our length, we want the value to be 400, and for our width, we want it to be well also 400. So we'll go in here. First, let's hook these up compile really quick and now we will set the values of these so 400 and 400 compile again and now um, we have our values so once we start adding meshes now or adding the instances it will automatically lay them out in a nice orderly line um, or square I guess because we're going to be making more of a square shape I guess so um, now make sure again that your length is plugged into the um, to the for loop for the x and your width is plugged into the, to the for loop for the y, right? And hook it all up like that, right? So now the last thing we need to do is we need to give our um, number of meshes x and y some default values. So you know, click on number of meshes x, go to default values. Let's just give it a default of one. Same thing for y. 1. Now if you go in the viewport, you can see it's automatically generating it. Compile and save, right? Um, so now we can actually put our floor, or our floor is ready to be put in the game. So let's come out here. I'm going to delete this floor because we're going to generate our own. It's going to be super cool. So back in the content browser, go find your, your proc gen floor. Drag it out here, right? Drop it into the level. Um, let's get it down to a floor level. Just like that. Line it up. Something like that, I guess we'll do. And then now all we have to do, if we look over here in our def under default, we can see we have all the variables that we exposed. So if we change the number of meshes x, right? Change it to something like five. See it? It automatically just creates it out to five. Um, 
do it to 10. You know, it makes it out to 10. Um, let's do like eight. That'll probably be all right. Or seven. Yeah, we'll go with eight. All right, eight in that direction. Now if we go eight in that direction, we just made a floor like really quickly, really easily. And um, it's very efficient now. Um, so, I mean, some, some people might argue, you know, that uh, you could just, you know, maybe scale up a very large piece. Um, and that's, you know, that's fine too for some purposes. But um, again, this is kind of just the basics of procedural generation. So there's a lot of um, really kind of, you know, cool, cool things that you can do uh, by, you know, with about all of your, your rules that you can establish um, for your procedural generation. Like, for example, we could, you know, create more of a uh, um, kind of a road kind of thing by telling like the edges to you know be raised up a little bit um, or we could um, you know create kind of like cool intersections for roads or you know whatever really there's there's a lot of really cool things you can do with procedural generation um, so kind of just to kind of show its power let's I don't know, let's bump this to 100 100 and you can see it just instantly makes a grid of a thousand you know a thousand instances which when you play I mean it, it renders um, again very efficiently so it's no it's not really uh, your CPU won't really take a hit which is good um, that is until it gets super super large um, but anyways so yeah that's really kind of the basics of it um, you know here's the importance of the having the mesh width and length correct if you change the value see it creates some weird separations um, so I mean it looks kind of cool but again you probably want to make sure the values are correct um, but yeah, really, that's that's all I've got for you for the procedural generation floor. Um, again, just to show you the the code, here it is, going like that, and there we go. So I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. Um, if you want to see more cool stuff on procedural generation, you know we'll have a lot more tutorials coming soon. Um, but with that, thank you and have a good.